In this video, we will get introduced to Bezel 3 and also we will take a look at Bezel 2 versus Bezel 3 side by side. So Bezel 3 which was introduced in December 2000 which was agreed by committee in December 2010 maintained the three pillar structure of Bezel 2. If you remember in Bezel 2 there were three pillars capital adequacy ratio, supervisory review and market disclosure. It maintained those three pillar structure because theoretically that should help a lot to the the financial health of the whole environment. However, it acted hugely on the shortcomings of Bajal 2. So Bajal 3 intend to address shortcoming of Bajal 2 to create more stable banking and financial sectors. And if you take a look the main of the Bajal 3 can be stated as improve banks ability to absorb losses and shocks. Secondly, to improve risk management and governance. And third, strengthens banks transparency and disclosure. If you go and take a look at shortcomings of Bajal 2, what you will realize these were the main issues due to which it created little inst inst instability in the financial sector. So Bajal 3 intended to aim these three things. And what are the major features of Bajal 3? First of all, it provided a stricter definition of capital. What qualifies to be capital and what not, it became more clear. Secondly, it says that common equity, which was 2%, the norm was 2% in Bajal 2, it said it has to be minimum 4.5. Why? Because if you think of common equity is something which is the first level of support to you and it's available to the firm to absorb losses and shocks. And that's why when you increase this 4.5, it definitely enhances the firm's stability, firm's ability to absorb these things. It also said the TVR and capital, which was 4% norm in Bachelor 2, it should be minimum 6%. It, is, it introduced one more term which is called capital conservation buffer of 2.5% of the risk weighted asset. Due to which what happened like in Bajal 2 all said and done you were keeping 8% of the total risk weighted asset as the required capital that became 10.5% in Bajal 3 because you are keeping additional 2.5%. It introduced a mandatory leverage ratio. Leverage ratio is the tier one, tier one capital to a total asset to 3%. It means if you are putting $3 million as the tier one capital, then your total asset should not go beyond $100 million. So that your total leverage ratio should be minimum 3%. You can go, your total asset can go up to only 100 million which means you are limiting the bank's freedom to keep adding assets with regard to capital. So it is, it is, it is addressing that how far you can go for a given capital. And if you go next what you will realize it recommends better liquidity ratio the norms are expected by 2015 in means it also introduced a new term which is called counter cyclical buffer. What it says that when you are in a stress or bad time use this. So this buffer you can keep at 0% when you are in a stressed or bad scenario. But when you are healthy keep it minimum 3% so that you have money you have this, you have the ability to absorb losses and shocks during the bad time. So that's why it is called counter cyclical. And also systematic important financial institutions which are essentially those big financial institutions where instability means probably the instability of the whole industry. They are expected to go much beyond Bajal 3 recommendations. Now let's take a look at Bajal 2 versus Bajal 3 side by side. So 
Bajal 3 introduced the capital conservation buffers of 2.5% which was not at all there in Bajal 2 due to which the minimum ratio of capital total capital to risk weighted asset which used to be 8% in Bajal 2 is actually 10.5% in Bajal 3. Minimum ratio of common equity to risk weighted asset which was 2% in Bajal 2 became 4.5%. Tier 1 capital to risk weighted asset which was 4% became 6% here. Leverage ratio which was not at all there in Bajal 2 became 3% here. And the leverage ratio for 8 CFH in US, 8 big banks were identified at CFH, systematic important financial institution in US in 2013 and it was mandated that they should keep a leverage ratio of 8% means if they are putting 8 million dollar they can go up to 100 million if they are putting 4 million dollar they can go only up to 50 million dollar counter cyclical buffer again that was not at all there in Bajal 2 it became 0 to 2.5 percent 0 percent when you are under stress 2.5 when you are healthy scenario Minimum liquidity coverage ratio that was not there in Bajal 2, it became, it, the norm is expected to come in 2015 and the same way for the net stable funding ratio.